Morning. Well, welcome to Union Baptist Church. Uh, as we're getting ready for praise and worship, I'm going to ask y'all to stand up, and I'm going to ask Mr. Herman if he would open us in prayer. All right, y'all stand and join us for praise and worship.
the valley let your sweet aroma fill my life rolls of share and show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight and fairest of ten thousand make me a reflection of your life day star shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your words speak to me. Show me what I've never seen before. Lord, I want to be your witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lord, I see a world that's dying, wounded by the master of DC. Groping in the darkness. Haunted by the years of past defeat Then I see you standing near me, Lord Shining with compassion in your eyes In your eyes Jesus, shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night. Believe me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your words speak to me. Show me. Your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your words speak to me. Show me what I've never seen before. Lord, I want to be your witness. And you can take what's wrong and make it right. You always make it right. They saw shine. Your love shine through me in the night. And Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me 
next song um, good good father um, I, I so burdened by what has happened in this storm and I know so many of you are um, at this time children's church can go ahead and while they're walking um, if we could have those any of you that maybe uh, could come up and stand in for we, we've got a few people that are gone in the storm uh, some of our linemen are gone we've got some uh, first responders who are headed out um, any of you that will be willing to just come in and stand in um, even standing in for a mom who still hasn't been able to call for help yet a uh, dad that can't call for help we've got people who are maybe sick and elderly that no one has gotten to yet um, I know Brother Mitchell has brought up a, a pastor that Mr. Glenn, who was actually in our church for a little while and then got called to Maggie Valley uh, where he was preaching at a church. And um, there's so much devastation, even down in Florida, all the way through the storm's path that we're just so burdened by and um, hard to even imagine, especially if you've been to the mountains, you've vacationed there, or if you've lived there for you know an amount of time or know people that live there that it's just such a beautiful place and that we go and, can, and just can really sense God, God's presence. Um, our youth was actually at Awanata Valley up in Greenville just a couple of weekends ago, and their whole front the whole front entrance is just washed out. They haven't they haven't lost anything else, thank the Lord. But um, you know, just just being able to be there and see God's beauty and His majesty, and you know, but He's still in control. And um, and this song is is good, good Father. That just because bad things do happen doesn't mean He's not still good. And so. Okay. Um, Brother Kevin, can I get you to, to lead us in prayer for this group of people? Oh, mighty Father, we come before you today, Lord, just thanking you for this time together under the roof, Lord, that you have provided for us so graciously, Lord. Lord, right now we just lift up all the tragedy that's happened, Lord, from Florida all the way up to the mountains, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you be with each family. Lord, even if, if there's anyone who is lost in the midst, Lord, that you would use this to bring them to the saving grace of your son, Jesus, Lord. Lord, that you would just keep them safe and keep them in your presence, Lord. God, that you do us daily, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would, would anoint them, Father, anoint the speaker today, Father, Lord. If there's one lost in this house, Lord, they would know you before it's too late, Lord, because you tell us today is the day of salvation. Lord, I just want to thank you and praise you for all that you do day in and day out. For in your mighty and precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um. 
you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. can hardly think as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, love, love. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're perfect. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, just like the praise band said, we do have a good, good father. And what a blessing it is to gather back in his house this morning and to worship him. And like I said, pray for all those that got hurt by the devastating storm. So appreciate everybody coming out this morning. Great job, praise band. Um, so for those that don't know, Pastor Chris is away this morning. Um, Noah's having his ring ceremony at the Citadel. Um, so that's where he's at. So definitely pray for his family as they travel. Um, but we are fortunate this morning. We do have Brother Brad Wise. Um, he's going to come speak for us this morning. Um, I don't know if any, who knows Brad, but Brad is currently a Bible teacher at Dillon Christian School, so doing a great work there. Um, most of you guys know Pastor Rob Pierce at Lotta Baptist. Brad's married to his oldest daughter. I got that wrong earlier. He corrected me. Not the youngest, but the oldest daughter. Um, I actually worked with Brad for a little while at ACS Technologies. Super good guy. Super excited to have him come speak for us this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to pray for him, then I'll invite him to come on up. So let us pray. Our most gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, as that song said, Lord, you are a good, good Father, Lord. And we're so undeserving, Lord, but so grateful for your, um, your um, blessings to us, Lord. And Lord, this morning, Lord, we're just thankful for Brad's uh, willingness to come speak. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you just, everything, that you have him say everything that you need him to say this morning, Lord. Again, we just love you and we thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Whew. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a great opportunity to be here and come and speak with you guys this morning. 
Uh, it's just it's such a blessing to be here this morning. Great time of worship, great time of fellowship with all of you this morning. So thank you again. <clears throat> Our message today is called Undivided Attention. And we're going to be focusing on a, a couple key passages. Uh, our main one is going to be in Romans chapter 8. So if you want to go and turn there, uh, we're going to be at 38, verse 38 and 39. As you're turning there, I just want to ask you guys, how many of us like to talk? Okay, go ahead. Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yeah, we, we can all raise our hands, right? We all love to talk. I, I like that meme on Facebook that says, my teacher moved my seat in class because I was talking too much. Well, I talk to everybody, so moving my chair is not going to stop me from talking. We all like to talk, right? We all like to communicate with others. We like to be connected to others, whether it be talking about fishing, whether it be talking about music, sports, um, of course, that would be the Braves with Mr. Chris, Pastor Chris, talking about the news, anything. We all like to have conversations with others. So we're going to talk today about having conversations with, you guessed it, God, our Heavenly Father. We have that opportunity to communicate with God. Who better to talk to than the one who gave us the ability to talk? I've been reading a book titled, Why Don't We Listen Better? And this book has really opened my eyes to some great tools, useful techniques, and even requirements in an efficient conversation. So to sum it up, the book is designed and written to assist people in communicating efficiently with other people. Uh, some key points that we want to include in today's message uh, in today's conversation are a understanding who are the ones involved in the conversation and b essential elements of the conversation so it's going to kind of get a little uh i don't, I don't know how to say it. it's kind of like a, a pre message here before we get into the message if you will so first off we have letter a there are two parties involved at least two parties always involved in any conversation we have the talker and the listener. Good. You guys, are, you guys already know this stuff. So from the start, there has to clearly be defined who's who in the conversation, or the conversation's not going to go very well. The talker is the one who expresses their situation or asserts the topic of the conversation, and they're the ones that really own the conversation. The listener is the one who does, doesn't really own the conversation, but they're active in the conversation, understanding, trying to clarify what the talker is saying. And then our second point is that feelings need to be expressed. Now, I know we men don't like expressing feelings, right? But if feeling is not expressed in a conversation, it's just flat words which are not accomplishing as much as they really could be accomplishing. So we need to express feelings. Now, how many of us have seen the movie Inside Out or Inside Out 2? Anybody? Okay, two people? Good, good. Okay. So of those two people, you guys, who is your favorite character? Joy? Who likes joy? Good. Okay, good. Uh, who likes sadness? Uh, hey, sadness is a good character. We all need to have sadness sometimes. Who liked anxiety? Anybody like anxiety? Yeah, that was a Oh, you liked anxiety? That was a crazy character. So, uh, just kidding. But, but these, are, be these, these are what need to be efficiently communicated. These are, are in desperate need for good conversations. Okay, so let's dive in here. As we run with these two, two key points in mind, we're going to look today at God's Word, and we're going to get three things out of our message today. We're going to realize our need to talk to our Heavenly Father. Realize our need to talk to our Heavenly Father. Number two, realize ways that God talks to us. And number three is realize ways that we can have continual conversations with God. Now, I'm excited about this. Are you guys excited? Good. All right. Same two people. Good. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to dive into your word and to understand how we can have better conversations with you, Lord, how we can give you our undivided 
attention. And God, we thank you for your word and what it means to us, and we know that it will not return void, that it will prick our hearts and spur us to draw us closer to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so number one is we need to realize our need to talk to our Heavenly Father. Now, we tend to communicate with others that we have stuff in common with or people that we love with those that we care about, with those that we desire to learn about. Now, I don't think that it's scientifically proven, but you will find, too, the ones that you spend your time with are the ones you begin to act like, the ones you begin to talk like and behave like. There's a guy named John Piper. He is a respected pastor and author, and he once said, God created the universe so that it would display the worth of his glory. And he created us so that we would see this glory and reflect it by knowing and loving him with all our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. You see, God is our source. God is the one who has created us. He has created us to have a loving relationship with him. James chapter 4 verse 5 tells us that even he yearns jealously for the spirit he has made to dwell in us. He has created us to have a loving relationship with him, a relationship which is set at such a high priority in our lives that nothing should be able to compare to it. Now, I like to think of time as money. And um, unless you're Miss Weatherford over there, you only have a small amount of money, right? So the things we spend our money on are the things that we care about. Same thing with time. The thing that we spend our time on is what we care about. My, uh, my nephew just turned seven. We just got back from Wilmington last night um, celebrating his birthday this weekend. And we were at a restaurant, and he was drinking a drink. And my brother said, time goes by so fast. And I said, why does it go by so fast? It's not like it's running from anything, which, of course, for us is like, uh, that's not that funny. But for a seven-year-old, he, had, he literally busted out laughing and looked at me and was like, Uncle Brad, I had to push my drink back down my straw because I was going to spit it across the restaurant because he just thought that was so funny. But when you think about it, time is going by very quickly, right? And so we have to be cautious of how we spend our time. Be careful with what you spend your time on. Be purposeful with how you spend your time and the relationships that you have and the connections you have with people through social media as well as face-to-face. -face. Realize who you need to spend the most time talking to. Are you going to spend a little bit of time talking to hundreds of people? Or are you going to spend a lot of time learning about specific people? understanding their needs, understanding their desires. Now, I know it's super easy for us to say that we need to spend time talking to God, but we really need to understand just how important time with God really is. We need to connect with him. We need to communicate with him. I want to look at how important prayer is, and when we look at the Bible, we can see how many times prayer or a derivative of the word prayer is mentioned. And just looking in the King James Version, the word pray itself is mentioned 313 times. That's a lot. The past tense word prayed, like you've already prayed or somebody has already prayed, is 65 times. The subject of prayer, 109 times. The topic of multiple ways of praying, 24, and then um, some other pray, pray, prayest and prayeth, again in the King James Version, are nine times. So that is a total of 520 times. In the most important book we could ever read this word or a form of it, it is used 
520 times. That's, that's pretty important if you ask me, right? Now, of course, this is just the English translation of the Greek and Hebrew words. And again, it is just the King James Version. But we still get a clear understanding that prayer is super important. Communication with God is so important. So we're encouraged today to realize our need to talk to God. We also need to realize ways that God talks to us. Now, my mom, she's, she's in the senior center now and she has dementia, but um, previously she had some an amazing handwriting, okay? An incredible, beautiful handwriting. She has always been into arts and crafts and she could pretty much make anything out of anything and it would look professional excuse me it would look professional it would look beautiful but one key thing about my mom's artistic ability is that her handwriting was uncomparable and beautiful me my brother and my sister could pick out my mom's handwriting out of thousands of handwritten letters there's just a characteristic about the way my mom used to write. It's not something that can be easily copied. And now I would know as once when I was much younger, I was in third grade, as a third grader, I did something that I wasn't supposed to do, so I got a discipline slip. Well, I was like, hey, I just learned last week how to write in cursive, so I'm just gonna write my mom's signature on there for her and not tell her about this. She doesn't need to know. Woo, I have handwriting that's worse than the doctor's handwriting. And so trying to pass off my mom's beautiful signature as mine did not work very well. The principal called my mom, my mom came into the school and things just went kind of downhill from there. But we all have our own way of writing and a very distinctive attribute of the words that we use, the way we form the letters that we express have a distinct attribute to them. Also, there's something about the ability to listen, isn't there? Music and sound interact with your entire brain. We had a wonderful time of worship together this morning and the band sounded amazing, but I want you to think about somebody that you love. Everybody close your eyes real quick. Think about somebody that you love. Now, can you hear their voice in your head right now? Can you hear that person's voice? You know what that person's voice sounds like. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Now, we've all got voices in our head. I understand. It's just kidding. But for real, though, there is something key to a person's voice that especially when we have that love connection, whether it be a parent, whether it be a sibling, whether it be your best friend or something like that, but the shaping of their vocal cords hit your ear in a certain way that it kind of kind of gets you excited, makes your heart beat a little faster, right? When you recognize their voice, there's just something about it inside of you that makes you feel love, makes you feel a connection with them like you don't have with anyone else. Now, I want to encourage us to search for that with our Heavenly Father, with the one who has created us, the one who gives us life, gives us breath. Realize ways that God talks because he is talking. Now let's look at some ways that God talks that we see in the Bible. Number one is the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 tells us to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to keep it with us, to understand its value and understand our need to have his word with us. This day and age, no one fights with swords, but a sword was a crucial thing to have in Bible times when you were fighting an opponent. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 explains, for the word of God is alive and active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and dividing spirit, dividing joints 
and narrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of our heart. In Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 11, it says, God says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and making it flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for those who eat, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You see, God's word is very purposeful and very direct. If you feel as though you are not hearing from God, if you feel like God is distant or not speaking to you at the moment, just simply open his word and you are guaranteed to hear from our Heavenly Father. So we see that God speaks through the Bible. God also speaks through his Holy Spirit. Now when the disciples heard Jesus, they heard God. And when Jesus spoke, that was an encounter that they had with God. Henry Blackaby in Experiencing God encourages us to understand in the Gospels, God speaks through the Son, Jesus, and we can also understand that he speaks through the Spirit. So when we move through the Gospels, even into Acts and to the present time, we often change our whole way of thinking, knowing that Jesus is in heaven, but we live as if God quit speaking personally to his people. Sometimes we fail to realize that an encounter with the Holy Spirit is an encounter with God. God clearly spoke to his people in Acts. He clearly speaks to us today. From Acts to the present, God has been speaking to us through his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit takes up residence inside of us as believers. You yourselves are God's temple, and God's Spirit lives in you. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So God speaks through the Bible. God speaks through his spirit. And God does speak audibly. Uh, there's a number of passages where we see that. But I'm going to focus on even just Genesis. Genesis 1, 2, and 3. We see a lot about God speaking in all of creation. Um, he speaks to Adam and Eve. Even in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, God spoke to Moses to give instructions to the Israelites. God spoke to Adam and Eve in the garden in Genesis 2, 16 and 18, as well as Genesis 3. Um, <clears throat> and we know that God speaks audibly because we can see that account. We see throughout other instances in the Bible that God speaks. Now, like someone's handwriting and the tone of their voice, these are all characteristics of how God has spoken. And since we know that God says in Malachi 3, 6, I, the Lord, do not change, we can be assured that he still speaks in these ways today. James 1, 17 says, for every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So now that we've realized our need to talk to God, we have looked at ways God talks to us, let's go ahead and move to number three. What do you guys say? So realize ways we can have conversations with God. So how do we come to our Heavenly Father to have a conversation with Him? First thing I want to look at is our position. Now, a few years back, uh, we had the opportunity to see an incredibly talented group perform. Uh, you may have heard of them. Their name is Need to Breathe. Uh, they're amazing musicians, amazing singers. We had an opportunity at this show to speak with them afterwards. Now, I've been watching and listening to this band since 2005. How many of you guys weren't even born in 2005? Oh, man, over half the group. Wow. Whew. Whew. 
Okay, so 2005. So I've been listening to them since about 2005. Now, I, I, don't, I don't like worship these guys or anything, but I have, you know, a high standard for looking at them and everything. So when I got to talk to these guys after this amazing concert, I was like, I, could, I couldn't even come up with words to say. Like, the bass guitarist, Seth, he came over to me and was like, so how are you doing? Did you enjoy the show? And I was like, like that. I couldn't even say anything. But, um, but as we come before our Heavenly Father, we need to recognize our place in relation to him. Now, he is seated on his throne. In Isaiah 6, the prophet says, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling back to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. You see, the prophet's response here to seeing this is to immediately say, Woe is me, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And we see even Jesus comes with a specific position before God. In Matthew chapter 26 um, and Mark chapter 14, He, the Son of God, falls to the ground and prays that if possible the hour might pass from him. You see the Greek word here is literally that he laid face down on the ground and stretched himself out before God to present his request to him. To communicate with God. Wow! What an example set before us and other positions that we read throughout the Bible are kneeling. In 1 Kings 8.54, when Solomon had finished all these prayers and supplications to the Lord, he rose from before the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out toward heaven. Daniel 6 verse 10 says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. In Acts chapter 20, verse 36, when Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of the people to pray. In Ephesians 3, 14, Paul uses the word kneel to describe his position of prayer for the church in reference to the church in Ephesus. And then Philippians chapter 2 says, Therefore God exalted him, being Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every, what? knee should bow in heaven and on earth and even under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We also see that people stand in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 5 it tells us about Jehoshaphat was standing in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of of the Lord when he prayed. We can also see throughout the Bible that we need to be with our hands raised in surrender to our Heavenly Father. Psalm 134, 2, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Psalm 141, verse 2, may my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Now, the position that you take is not based on or derived from the request you are making or what you're presenting to God, but it's based on our heart of worship. 
It's based on our personal recognition of where we need to be in relation to God when you communicate with him. We also use words to communicate with our Heavenly Father. Jesus, of course, gives us an outline, um, as we call the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> and this is a perfect example of how we should talk to God. And we see this in Matthew chapter 6. We have an amazing opportunity to pray and communicate with our Heavenly Father. And this is just, of course, an outline that Jesus gives us of how to pray and what to say when we pray. And some churches use that as kind of a recitation, if you will, on each service that they have and everything. And that's a good way to remind ourselves of that structure. But really, we should take that structure and apply it to our lives and say, okay, Jesus said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Look at that. First thing it's doing is recognizing our position to God. God is in heaven and we are not in heaven. And so we're first thing going to God saying, God, you are high. God, you are amazing. God, you are so magnific magnificent. And that should be our way of going and starting our prayer, starting our conversation with our Heavenly Father. We also want to look at the heart as we go into our communication time. As we look at the idea of what we say, we know that we can talk to God openly about anything. I want to encourage us to speak to God from our heart. Tell him what we feel. Tell him what you think. God does not get tired of repetition if it's from your heart. If you love someone, even if you are right beside them and experience the exciting thing with them, hearing them explain their excitement to you over and over again does not get old, does it? My wife, Anna, can tell me day in and day out how much she loved going to Disney World. I was with her at Disney World, but she can tell me how much she loved that trip, and I will never get tired of hearing about how much she loved that trip because I love her and I want to hear her expression of her excitement. The same is true and even more with God. You see, God already knows you. God already knows what has happened in your life today. One, because he was there and already knows, but two, because he made it happen. But he wants to hear you call to him. He wants to hear how you felt about what you experienced. If your day was stressful, he wants to hear about it. If your day was incredible, he wants to hear about that too. God cares about you, and God wants to communicate with you and wants you to want to talk to him too. So this brings us to our response, if you will, our call to action. So think about how often you actually talk to God. How often do you truly talk to your creator, God? If you say 24-7, that's great. If you say not enough, that's good to recognize as well. Now we talked about our desire to stay in communication with God. And we can know that he wants to communicate with us. Now, most communication tools and communication apps have sort of a notification option on your phone. It can send you a little pop-up notification and, uh, or on your phone or your tablet or your computer and let you know that someone is trying to communicate with you. Uh, our tendency, though, is to either overlook the pop-up or to reply very quickly and move on with whatever it was we were originally doing. God may prick your heart. God's spirit inside of us will notify us of his wanting to communicate. We don't need to understand this as we should just quickly reply and move on with our day. No, God wants us to stop what we're doing and have a full conversation with him. He wants us to give him our undivided attention. Our lives these days are so chopped up into little tea tiny sections, we don't understand what undivided means. 
when we look at the word undivided, we see that un, U-N, is a prefix, which means not. And we can easily associate it with the unfair, ungrateful, unseen, things like that, which means not fair, not grateful, not seen together. Divided means to separate, the act of separating something into parts, to put it into different sections. But God wants our attention that's not divided, not put into sections. He wants our full attention. He wants, nay, he deserves our attention that is not cut into small sections and served on a T-tiny paper plate. He deserves the bowl full of our attention, every single bit of our time, every single thought that you have. He deserves it all. You may ask the question, well, why should I give him my undivided attention? Why does he deserve all my time? Why does he deserve all my thoughts? Great questions, great questions. Those are wonderful things to ask. And the answer is because he loves you. He loves you more than anyone in the world could love you. More than everyone in the world could love you at one time. God loves you so much that we know John 3.16 tells us God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Of course, we know the story. Sin entered through the world through Adam and Eve, and the consequence of that sin has carried on through all humanity. The payment for sin is what? Starts with a D, ends with F. Go. Death. Yes, the payment for sin is death. But God, he demonstrates how much he truly loves us and that he gave his only son. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And we see that in Romans chapter 5. So I want to encourage you guys today to realize your need to talk to our Heavenly Father. Realize ways God talks to you and realize our deep inner desire to stay in an undivided connection and communication with our Heavenly Father. Now, to even begin communicating with God, you first need to respond to, to Him through acknowledging that you are a sinner, turning from your sin and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You see, Jesus has come to seek and to save the lost, which is us. The Bible says we are sinful from birth, from the moment we arrive. Psalm 51 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy garments. That's from Isaiah 64. However, God has sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. Although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. I'm going to go ahead and ask the worship team to come up. As they're coming up, I just want you to think about this, that Jesus came and died for you to restore that connection, to restore that relationship, because God wants to communicate with you. Let's bow our head and close our eyes together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to come before you today. We recognize that you are high and omnipotent and amazing all around. And we praise you. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us here today to respond as you communicate with us through your word as you call us into a growing relationship with you 
Lord, no matter what point we're at in our relationship with you, whether we've known you as Lord and Savior for 50 years, or we just accepted you as Lord and Savior last weekend, or if we haven't made that choice yet, Lord, we all have a step that we can take to get closer to you. Lord, I pray that you would prick our hearts this morning as you communicate with us through your spirit that's inside of us. Lord, I pray as we continue this time in worship and as we sing this song together to close out this service today, Lord, I pray that we'll respond as you communicate with us, Lord. I pray that we'll give you our undivided attention this morning. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.
Spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your Spirit lives within me, my victory, my victory. if the ushers would come forward as we uh, close in prayer here. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day you've blessed us with, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to come in your house and just worship you this morning, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for the speaker, Lord, and for the message that you sent through him, Lord. And we just ask that uh, as this time comes, that we just give back a portion, Lord, of what you've given us, Lord, that uh, we'll also continue to give back, Lord, and just give you our undivided attention, Lord, and uh, just allow you to speak to us and lead us and guide us, Lord, to where you would have us to go, Lord, no matter what. We just love you and we just praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. is 
seated. Rally here on the 13th. Um, Kent, you know what time that is? We eat at five and serve starts at six. Okay, that's the 13th. Um, Feed the Fuse is uh, Saturday, uh, October 12th at 10 a.m. Um, also, interpretive music resumes Wednesday, October 9th at five. Uh, men's Bible studies Tuesday, October 8th at 6:30. Also on the 8th, Women on Missions um, at 10. If you can't make it at 10, they have it at 6. Um, kids Choir resumes at the 5 o'clock Sunday on October the 6th. And Brotherhood Men's Ministry, uh, another wheelchair ramp. And that'll be Thursday, October the 3rd at 5.30. Anybody interested in see Mr. Kevin? Um, Daniel Churchwide Studies. And book of Daniel previews the night at six. And tonight at Great Expectations, they're having a youth rally. And they're also serving dinner starts at four, and their worship starts at five. Did I miss out on anything? <laughs> Everybody knows I'm kind of nervous. I <laughs> appreciate Mr. Brad speaking today, and um. If you would, Mr. Herman, will you close us in prayer? <laughs> 